I don't know about you, but I grew up in a world with popular science magazine that promised me robots. Yes, they did. I watched the Jetsons. They promised me a robot. I want a Rosie. Where's my Rosie? The one that does the dishes, does laundry, you know, wisecracking, kind of the Ethel Mertz on wheels kind of thing. With me today, I have a gentleman who knows a thing or two about robots, and robots really do exist. Oh, yes, they do. And a lot of our young students and kids around the area are actually building these robots. They are our future, and I'm going to try to find me a little kid to do this for me. I have Bob Redman, who's here from Rockets and Robots. You can learn more about this. Go to rocketsrobots.com. Mr. Redman, how are you, sir? Good, good. How about you? I'm good, and I do. I so want my robot, and I love the idea that you had a dad who had a 30-year career at NASA, and you grew up around rockets and and this was this was your your introduction into what the present was not even the future for me i grew up thinking about all these things but you actually were right in the middle of it and you now have something tell me a little bit about your program well what i do is i go to uh, schools all over california and in the santa clarita area as well and what i do is i talk to uh, students uh, k through six k through eight about the history of air flight and space flight. And when I do it, I like to really engage the kids. I mean, uh, kindergartners get just as much out of it as the uh, older kids. And I, one thing I do is use a lot of models. You can see I've got a few around here. But the... Um, the yeah, I, sure. I, see, I see the space shuttle. I see the... What is that? That's, That's the, the lunar module. The lunar module. Uh, right. Wow, they're actually quite beautiful. And then something made with... The, I, I recognize <laughs> those. Too, huh? That is, Those are rolls from a, a paper towel. And, and you've created what looks like a really nice model out of like household... I And those are... Those are Paper cups, like what water like drinking paper. cups. Exactly. Or the wow. kids can make them just cut out of a, a sort of a shape that looks like a sort of a Pac-Man. So and, and kids can make themselves. robots from the and rockets from the the very just exactly. the imagery to actually building them. Right. Exactly. And you go around to schools and you do you do assemblies, right? Is right, this, exactly. this is what you do? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then tell me a little bit about the, the you grow again. You grew up around this. Tell me a little bit about your background. Well, you know the uh, like I said, my dad worked for NASA for about thirty years. And uh, he, um, I was able to watch a lot of things. He worked on the X-15, which is a pretty big program back in the day. And they based a lot of the engineering on that to the uh, space shuttle uh, that later was, you know, had a 30-year career of its own. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got to see that land, uh, see him working on those. And uh, way back when, I worked at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. as a tour guide. Oh. And later on, I uh, was able to put together an Air and Space Expo in, uh, Lancaster and Palmdale and I brought a lot of aerospace companies together so uh, it had Lockheed we had uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory and Edwards Air Force Base and NASA they all came in along with schools side by side and uh, it was you were able to find out a lot about what's happening in the world of the technology and air flight and all that but also see what the kids are up to too in all the schools with the robotics programs and that sort of thing and they are really exciting because again they are the kids that are creating my tomorrow they're gonna make me right. my Rosie the robot right. now you've taken all these things that you've done all your experiences you've presented to over 250,000 students and with a with a, an assembly that's STEM, which stands for science, technology, help me out here. Engineering and math. Oh, yeah, math. I get a little nervous around the word math. I, get, right. I start to, it's like asbestos or, or what is that, the insulation under my collar. <laughs> I've got that problem. But, too, but it's important that kids are introduced to this right away, those four elements, because that is the future, that is everything that we are creating. That's right. And, you know, one thing, I, the, like I say, kindergartners on up, if they see the fun of it, I think that's where the key is, where they see the imagination and the fun. And it's all real things I talk about. Uh, but uh, And then if they want to follow up on my website, I have videos that you can see of what's going on currently in rockets and robots oh, and I've all that. Oh, I've seen those. You have some of the best it's, clips it's of, of, of rockets and robots. Yeah. And it is. It's something when kids develop that love and that passion, then they want to learn more. That curiosity gets sparked and they think, oh, well, how did that happen? And, and this is a, a very, very wonderful thing you've done. Okay, so the Rockets and Robots STEM Assembly, you've done this for about 15 years. 
years now? About 15 years, right? And like I say, I've gone all over California, and it's just been a real treat for me. I just love it when the kids' eyes light up when I do the shows, and they have a lot of questions. And if we have time, I can talk to the teachers and students after the shows, too, Okay. and show them how they can make things at home. So it doesn't have to be something they have to go out and buy and piece together No, again, you've, you know? you've made this out of household items. Right. You've, you've done a really lovely job recycling things that I typically put in the bin. <laughs> so that And it is. It's really nice, and I could see how a kid would love creating that and having that around. So you're hoping you're, you're, you're going to bring these programs to the Santa Clarita area, right? Yes, Hopefully? absolutely. I've, I've uh, gone to elementary schools mm-hmm. in the area. But again, I'm not that far away, so I can give a good price to all the schools locally here, too. And uh, what I like to do, like I say, with models is to be able to show things about how they opened and how they work. This is like a Mars rover here. <gasps> what? And it's a model I made so it, they can show the kids how things actually opened up. It gets its energy from the sun and what it's doing now. You made that? I made that, right. Wow. It's got six wheels on the bottom, and this is a Jet Propulsion Laboratory project. But I show the kids how it all works and the fact this has been running now for 11 years on Mars. I know. That's that's incredible. I know people yeah. that buy cars that don't have that kind of shelf life. <laughs> right. So the idea that we can send a vehicle to Mars and it yeah. can run that long, that's, exactly. re- that's really fun. Yeah. Now, if people want to learn more about you, I see a couple of ways they can do that. There's rockets-and-robots.com. Yes. yes. Uh-huh. Or just rockets robots. Either way, dot com. rocketsrobots.com. You'll get to me either way. And if you're you have you have kids or you are you have a classroom, you're, you're going to want to see this. And I encourage you to go to the website and look at the videos because it's true. He's got some of the the just coolest clips of some of the best rockets in history and robots. So how far am I from my Rosie the robot? Do you think I've, I've, I've seen the humanoids? You're you know, about two those, minutes away. I think. Really, yeah. really. Okay, so somewhere there's a fourth grader that's going to yeah, make me my. You bet. They're out there and they're doing it now. You know, Roomba yeah. was one of the things that blew my mind right. the idea that besides the cats being entertained by it that someone else could be doing the vacuum it's what it's, <laughs> there are robots among us right now they are right now they've been around for quite a while and a lot more are coming to us you know we with the computers we have right now and all that it's uh it's happening before our eyes and Do so you, the latest things that are happening i'm sorry that no. are in happening uh, out there i bring that to the fore too like right now you can send your name to mars You have about a week from now to get it done. Uh, And all you have to do is go online and type in NASA Insight, I-N-S-I-G-H-T, Name on Mars. So NASA Insight, Name on Mars. How do they put your name on Mars? And you can enter it and your name will go to Mars next year. And what? Where, where will my name be on Mars? Like carved in a rock? Well, it's putting it's like, it on a microchip. Yeah. And they have now about half a million names already that they can put on that microchip. And they send you a boarding pass also that you can print out. <laughs> so when it launches, they'll, actually, they'll send you updates and tweets and emails and all that so you can really get involved. So it's a great way to get kids involved in science. Too. So not only can you be Googled now by just your average person down the block, you, someone on Mars, if there was someone, yeah, not that well, I'm saying there is. Is, but you they could. Know. Wow, this is very <laughs> interesting. Bob Redmond, thank you so much for stopping by to talk about rockets and robots. Again, if you'd like to learn more, go to rockets and robots.com or you can go to rocketsrobots.com. Thank you so much for stopping thank by. Thank you for having me. This has been fun.